Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 3 in a short series of videos looking at the build of the flight seat. In this video we'll take some time to take a close look at the construction of this. Let's buckle up. As a brief recap, in the last video we looked very closely at the design that we see on screen now and I'm at the point where I can source all of the items of wood for this and start the construction process. I got this first batch from B&Q, although to be honest I was quite disappointed that it seems that the quality of the wood from the last time I bought from them has really dropped, particularly with the plywood, that there seemed to be a lot more voids and the quality just wasn't as good. So the second batch I went to a proper timber merchant's and these other items of wood were a much better quality and for what we can see on screen now which is the adapter plate for the electronic base you needed pieces that didn't have any kind of bow in them so these were a lot better. As mentioned this is the adapter plate which has been aligned at this point so we can fit it to the electronic base. This was just one of a couple of items that were cut by hand because it was just too big to be mounted onto the CNC bed. So we can see now the finished adapter plate with a good solid connection. As for most of the other items they could be CNC machined so as we can see here I've took some time to lay them all out and label them all up ready. The machining of this was undertaken at my father-in-law's. He has a CNC machine as we can see now and this did run for quite some weeks. There were so many items to cut here and I'd just like to give a shout out. Thanks Phil, I know I was around pretty much every single weekend for almost a month. Um, so thanks for all of your time on this as well. Well you can see here just a small number of the items as they're being cut. And this really is a great thing with a CNC machine is the versatility of it that it can not only be used to produce a fascias and very fine engraving but it can also be used to cut items of wood like this. Here are the majority of all of the machined items and it runs to quite a number of them. There's over 60 items here that have been cut and where there was waste material to make the best of that some spares have been cut also. So now start a process of sanding all of these and then priming them. And here we can see with that first coat of primer in place. The process of sanding, priming, sanding and then painting did rumble on for quite some weeks. And it was very much just chipping away a little bit each evening. For each bit you painted, you need to give it time to dry, so therefore coming back the next day. Here's everything sanded, ready for painting now. I did get a new type of sanding block for this, because there was quite a lot to get through, and it, it did make a really big difference, it was really helpful. Here's everything painted and ready for assembly. And I'm really glad the time was taken to sand everything carefully, and prime it, and re-sand it, and paint it to... Give it the finish that we see now. Step one to assemble the left and right sides of the backrest. So as it goes together now it'll be interesting to see how these guides, these grooves, indentations in the wood and the pre-drilled holes help it all go together. And I will just run a file around where the paint's gone into those just to sharpen up the edges. So initially it's just taking the time to hold everything together and make sure that it's all in place with perfect right angles. And everything else just starts to slot together. And we can see here the main structure of the rear backrest. And you can see the additional lower supports that I put in place back at the design phase. So shaping up nicely. 
So we'll go ahead and flip that over now and start working on some of the skins that will sit on the rear. So at this stage, the rear backrest is completed and there's just a test fit to what will be the main base, which will be the next key part to construct. But yeah, that's that's looking good. And it looks like the four coach bolts used on either side to hold the backrest in place are giving it a real good secure connection. There's a good few bits to put together for the base, but as it goes together, I can really see that all that time at the design phase really has paid off because it just, just seems to everything just fits. And we start to mount the some of the skins now, and they're the ones that give it some of the finished look and the aesthetic. And we can see on the front here that rectangular cutout, which is where that'll be for mounting the switches that control the movement of the seat on that electronic base. And also the tweak design that gives a bigger cavity within which I can mount the tactile transducers and other items. So the side skin's going on nicely. And again, the heads of those coach bolts sit nicely in the cutouts designed for them. So at this point, it's getting to the final stages of the physical construction. And we'll just have a look at that. Yep, looking good. So we can go ahead now and start to mount that onto the electronic base. And this is a key moment where I'll know for sure that it definitely fits properly. They marry up together and that in the movement of this now that there's no collision in any part of the underside of the physical wooden seat and the base. And fortunately, as per the design, we can see there's free movement. I did give an allowance all the way around. Effectively, below the adapter plate, the, the other sides represent it's almost a skirt that just sits and floats around the edge. So really happy that all goes together properly. As mentioned at the design phase, I'm looking to make a comfortable seat. And we can see here what's classed as a non-stretchable fabric, although there is some give in it. So I'll go ahead and that's now stapled in place. And I'd mention at this point that this removable seat design with this fabric stretch across is something that I did see in the Warthog project and a really good addition for his, which I've looked to implement into mine. It's now time to work on the larger wooden base, which will sit on the floor and the whole flight seat will be mounted onto. And I've designed this with some raised wooden profiles on the sides, which is where the weight of the rails of the electronic car base will go on and the whole weight of the seat will go through. But there is a void underneath it for all of the wiring to pass through. And as was done previously with the other items of wood, I at this point now sand it, prime it, sand it, and then paint it. I also take some time to now paint the various handles for the flight seat. Although I had the idea maybe to 3D print these, I did want to try and see initially if I could make them out of wood. So it's just a question now of trying to give them a finish where the grain of the wood is hidden to the greatest extent possible. Something that I found really interesting and we can see on screen now is for these two identical handles that have been made, they've both been spray painted with a silver metallic paint, but the one on the right has also got an additional layer of a clear sealant sprayed on, and that's given it a much smoother finish and has done a really good job of hiding the grain of the wood. And we can now see the seat to this point. And we'll just take a moment to look around this. And this is where it comes in really handy that the seat is just removable. And it'll be so much easier to work on anything within that cavity, such as a tactile transducers near near the other wiring. For the yellow pull handles, I wanted the colour to be very striking, 
So looking at this now, I'm really glad with the finish that that's got. And we can see the bearing in place, it gives it that pivot point. So I just take some time now to put in place a tactile switch, which can be triggered via that movement. And we'll just take a look at that now. We can see the channel that accommodates the wiring and then it passes through, the wiring passes through into the main body of the seat. As things move along, it's now time to look at the control of the motors of the electronic base. We can see on screen a motor controller and I use three of these, which I install into an enclosure that we can see now. So we'll just take a close up look at that. And we can also see the installed switches, which will be used to control the movement. What these switches control is the seat in terms of motion backwards and forwards, up and down and tilt. To give a clearer view of that movement, we'll just pan round to a side view. And this will give a better idea of the adjustability of the position of the seat. I'm really glad to have the functionality of this in the flight seat. And it was really this as the addition that made it such a bigger thing to build. Because at the design phase, most of the changes were so it could physically accommodate this. So I'll go ahead and start to configure the tactile transducers. So they're the bass shakers for passing through vibration from the sim. And we'll just retract the undercarriage. And I'll just trigger that again. And what the camera doesn't capture here is just how great that is and how it adds such an extra immersion to the flight experience. So the painted and finished floor plates in place now, which the, the actual whole base of the seat can now be mounted on. And this is important because given the weight of the seat and certain positions and angles it will be at, it ensures it can't tip over. As it nears completion, the motor controller box we can see will be just put out of sight around the side. So that's the main construction of the flight seat done. However, there are quite a number of finishing touches that are left to do, and I will look to share those in the next video. Thanks for watching.